Welcome. My name is Marcus Squeesaw, and I will be your facilitator for this Hazard Communication and Global Harmonization System presentation on Appendix B, Fiscal Hazard Classifications. This presentation will survey the 16 physical hazard classifications under Hazard Communication, GHS, their meanings, and how they fit into Hazard Communication. If you have any questions or comments, my contact information is listed on the screen. The primary objective we aim to cover with this video presentation pertains to the 16 physical hazard classifications. Specifically, the last bullet point listed on your screen describes the three hazard classifications within the Hazard Communication GHS standard. We will be addressing the health hazard classifications in this module and the idea is to cover the material in more depth to provide a greater understanding of Hazard Communication GHS. If you look on your screen, you will note that there are 16 physical hazards classified under GHS. I will cover each of these physical hazards in this presentation, but for right now I will simply list each one prior to discussing each specifically. Flammable gases, flammable aerosols, flammable liquids, flammable solids, gases under pressure, oxidizing gases, oxidizing liquids, oxidizing solids, explosives, self-reactives, pyrophoric liquids, pyrophoric solids, spontaneous heating, emits flammable gas, organic peroxides, corrosive to metals. We are now going to survey each of these 16 physical hazards classified under GHS. Similar to our discussion on the health hazard classifications, the idea here is to present these physical hazards to you in order that you may be able to recognize these hazards as they occur throughout the workplace. Recognition of these hazards is the primary goal of this video presentation, so please do not feel overwhelmed. Let's turn our attention now to explosives. Prior to going over the six divisions of explosives, I think it is important to present five definitions that pertain to this physical hazard classification. An explosive chemical is a solid or liquid chemical which is in itself capable by a chemical reaction of producing gas at such a temperature and pressure and at such a speed as to cause damage to the surroundings. Pyrotechnic chemicals are included even when they do not involve gases. A pyrotechnic chemical is a chemical designed to produce an effect by heat, light, sound, gas, or smoke, or a combination of these as a result of a non-detonative self-sustaining exothermic chemical reaction. An explosive item is an item containing one or more explosive chemicals. A pyrotechnic item is an item containing one or more pyrotechnic chemicals. An unstable explosive is an explosive which is thermally unstable and or too sensitive for normal handling, transport, or use. An intentional explosive is a chemical or item which is manufactured with a view to produce a practical explosive or pyrotechnic effect. Now that we have defined many of the terms found within this particular physical hazard classification, we will go over the six divisions of explosive chemical substances. Chemicals and items of this class shall be classified as unstable explosives or shall be assigned to one of the following six divisions depending on the type they present. Division 1.1 Chemicals and items which have a mass explosion hazard or a mass explosion is one which affects almost the entire quantity present virtually instantaneously. Division 1.2 Chemical and items which have a projection hazard but not a mass explosion hazard. Division 1.3 Chemicals and items which have a fire hazard and either a minor blast hazard or a minor projection hazard or both but not a mass explosion hazard. Combustion of which gives rise to considerable radiant heat 
or which burn one after another, producing minor blast or project projection effects, or both. Division 1.4 Chemicals and items which present no significant hazard. Chemicals and items which present only a small hazard in the event of ignition or initiation. The effects are largely confined to the package and no projection of fragments of appreciable size or range is to be expected. An external fire shall not cause virtually instantaneous explosion of almost the entire contents of the package. Division 1.5 Very insensitive chemicals which have a mass explosion hazard. Chemicals which have a mass explosion hazard but are so insensitive that there's very little probability of initiation or of transition from burning to detonation under normal conditions. Division 1.6 Extremely insensitive items which do not have a mass explosion hazard. Items which contain only extremely insensitive detonating chemicals and which demonstrate a negligible probability of accidental initiation or propagation. Now let's move on towards flammable gases. Flammable gas means a gas having a flammable range with air at 20 degrees centigrade and a standard pressure of about 14 pounds per square inch or 14.7 psi. Please note that aerosols should not be classified as flammable gases. As you can see from the table on the screen, there are two categories for flammable gases, category 1 and category 2. Similar to our discussion on the 10 health hazard classifications, the category found in the physical hazard classification is ranked the same way. That is, the lower the category number, the more dangerous the chemical is said to be. Category 1 gases are ignitable in a mixture of 13% or less by volume in air or have a flammable range with air of at least 12 percentage points regardless of the lower flammability limit. Category 2 gases have a flammable range while mixed in air. Let's move on to flammable aerosols now. Aerosol means any non-refillable receptacle containing a gas compressed, liquefied, or dissolved under pressure and fitted with a release device allowing the contents to be ejected as particles in suspension in a gas or as a foam, paste, powder, liquid, or gas. Flammable aerosols have two categories, Category 1 and Category 2. Category 1 aerosols contain greater than or equal to 85% flammable components as a chemical heat of combustion is greater than or equal to 30 kilojoules per gram. Category 2 flammable aerosols contain greater than 1% flammable components or the heat of combustion is greater than or equal to 20 kilojoules per gram in addition to the specific requirements outlined in the chart shown on your screen, which are dependent upon whether the aerosol is a foam or spray in type. Let's move on now to oxidizing gases. Oxidizing gas means any gas which may, generally by providing oxygen, cause or contribute to the combustion of other material more than air does. Oxidizing gases has but a single category. Let's move on to gases under pressure. Gases under pressure are gases which are contained in a receptacle at a pressure of 200 kilopascals or about 29 pounds per square inch gauge or more, or which are liquefied or liquefied and refrigerated. They comprise compressed gases, liquefied gases, dissolved gases, and refrigerated liquefied gases. There are four groups of gases under pressure that the Hazard Communication GHS system on physical hazards addresses. Compressed gas. A, gas is, a compressed gas is a gas which, when under pressure, is entirely gaseous at negative 50 degrees centigrade, including all gases with a critical temperature of less than or equal to 50 degrees centigrade. 
liquefied gas. A liquefied gas is a gas which, when under pressure, is partially liquid at temperatures above negative 50 degrees centigrade. A distinction is made between high pressure liquefied gas or a gas with a critical temperature between negative 50 degrees centigrade and 65 degrees centigrade and a low pressure liquefied gas which is a gas that has a critical temperature above 65 degrees centigrade. Refrigerated liquefied gas. A refrigerated liquefied gas is a gas which is made partially liquid because of its low temperature. Dissolved gas. A dissolved gas is a gas which, when under pressure, is dissolved in a liquid phase solvent. The chart seen on your screen outlines the specifics just discussed regarding gases under pressure. If any of these types of gases are present within your workplace, the pictogram denoting the compressed gas cylinder shown below the table should be exhibited. Let's now turn our attention to flammable liquids. There are two important definitions we need to cover regarding flammable liquids, which are flammable liquid and flashpoint. Flammable liquid means a liquid having a flashpoint of not more than 93 degrees centigrade. Flashpoint means the minimum temperature at which a liquid gives off vapor in sufficient concentration to form an ignitable mixture with air near the surface of the liquid. The Pinsky Martin's closed cup is one acceptable testing method for acquiring a flashpoint for a given chemical. As presented on the screen in a table, there are four categories for flammable liquids, all of which pertain to flashpoint. Category 1 flammable liquids will have a flashpoint less than 23 degrees centigrade and an initial boiling point of less than or equal to 35 degrees centigrade. Category 2 flammable liquids will have a flash point of less than 23 degrees centigrade and an initial boiling point of greater than 35 degrees centigrade. Category 3 flammable liquids will have a flash point greater than or equal to 23 degrees centigrade and less than or equal to 60 degrees centigrade. Category 4 flammable liquids will have a flash point greater than 60 degrees centigrade and less than 93 degrees centigrade. Now that we have made a connection between how flash point determines the category of a flammable liquid, it is important to understand that handling and storage requirements for flammable liquids are based upon the hazard category. However, that is beyond the scope of this video presentation, but nonetheless, I thought it a noteworthy topic to bring up briefly. Let's turn our attention to flammable solids now. Flammable solid means a solid which is readily combustible solid or which may cause or contribute to fire through friction. Readily combustible solids are powdered, granular, or pasty chemicals which are dangerous if they can be easily ignited by brief contact with an ignition source such as a burning match and if the flame spreads rapidly. Flammable solids are broken up into two categories, Category 1 and Category 2. Category 1 flammable solids are characterized by burning rate tests for chemicals other than metal powders and metal powders. For Category 1, the burning rate test for chemicals other than metal powders, a wetted zone does not stop fire and the burning time is less than 45 seconds or the burning rate is greater than 2.2 millimeters per second. Under the same category, metal powders will have a burning time of no less than or equal to five minutes. Category 2 flammable solids are characterized by a burning rate test for chemicals other than metal powders and metal powders. For category 2, the burning rate test for chemicals other than metal powders, the wetted zone stops the fire for at least four minutes and the burning time is less than 45 seconds or the burning rate is greater than 2.2 millimeters per second. Under the same category, metal powders will have a burning time of greater than 5 minutes and less than or equal to 10 minutes. If you need more information on burning times, burning rates, and the methodology for testing flammable solids with respect to Category 1 and Category 2, feel free to contact me directly to discuss further. 
Let us turn our attention now to self-reactive chemicals. Self-reactive chemicals are thermally unstable liquid or solid chemicals liable to undergo a strongly exothermic decomposition even without participation of oxygen or air. This definition includes or excludes rather chemicals classified under this section as explosives, organic peroxides, oxidizing liquids, or oxidizing solids. A self-reactive chemical is regarded as possessing explosive properties when in laboratory testing the formulation is liable to detonate, to deflagrate rapidly, or to show a violent effect when heated under confinement. Self-reactive chemicals shall be classified in one of seven categories, types A to G for this class, according to the following principles. Any self-reactive chemical which can detonate or deflagrate rapidly as packaged will be defined as self-reactive chemical type A. Any self-reactive chemical possessing explosive properties and which, as packaged, neither detonates nor deflagrates rapidly, but is liable to undergo a thermal explosion in that package, will be defined as self-reactive chemical type B. Any self-reactive chemical possessing explosive properties when the chemical as packaged cannot detonate or deflagrate rapidly or undergo a thermal explosion will be defined as self-reactive chemical type C. Any self-reactive chemical which in laboratory testing meets any of the following will be defined as self-reactive chemical type D. Detonates partially, does not deflagrate rapidly and shows no violent effect when heated under confinement, or does not detonate at all, deflagrates slowly and shows no violent effect when heated under confinement, or does not detonate or deflagrate at all and shows a medium effect when heated under confinement. Any self-reactive chemical which, in laboratory testing, neither detonates nor deflagrates at all and shows low or no effect when heated under confinement will be defined as self-reactive chemical type E. Any self-reactive chemical which, in laboratory testing, neither detonates in the cavitated state nor deflagrates at all and shows only a low or no effect when heated under confinement as well as low or no explosive power will be defined as self-reactive chemical type F. Any self-reactive chemical which, in laboratory testing, neither detonates in the cavitated state nor deflagrates at all and shows no effect when heated under confinement nor any explosive power, provided that it is thermally stable, self-accelerating decomposition temperature is 60 degrees centigrade to 75 degrees centigrade for a 110-pound package, and for liquid mixtures uh, having a boiling point greater than or equal to 150 degrees centigrade is used for desensitization will be defined as self-reactive chemical type G. This will conclude our first part of a two-part series on physical hazards. Uh, feel free to look at the part two of this presentation and I will uh, wish you a, a good day and see you then.